right, good afternoon. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and uh, we're going to build a mouse pad. Okay, very simple project. It can be made out of either two or three pieces. I'm going to do three pieces on this particular mouse pad. Now, our mouse pad template actually has two different types of mouse pads. Mouse pads, mice pad, uh, pads for the mouses. And it, um, one is this type right here. It's got a nice squishy wrist uh, guard thingy on the bottom. And then the other one is this one right here. This is what we're building in this video. Um, tomorrow I will come out with the video on the, uh, the one with the squishy wrist guard. And um, it's, it's really nice. And it's not as, as difficult to do that inlay um, with the squishy wrist guard as people probably think it is. So <clears throat> I promise it's worth a watch. But anyway, today um, we just finished the video on tooling that piece right there. Okay, I threw some oil on it, let it set for a little bit. Um, in the project box, we also put this dark brown piece of uh, imported English bridle. Um, and then not in the project box, because it's not really necessary. You could just use these two pieces and make a really nice mouse pad. But I'm going to actually just line it. I've got this scrap piece of belly of uh, some other bridle leather or something. I don't know, it was just in the corner of my office. Um, but I am going to glue that to the bottom of my main piece here. Um, just because I want it to be a little bit more rigid. Uh, when I use a mouse pad, it goes into my backpack a lot, and so I want it to be more rigid. It won't just always sit on a desk. Um, I use a laptop for everything. It goes in my backpack and goes home with me almost daily, and then comes back with me almost daily, um, unless I forget it at one of those two locations. It's happened. So anyway, um, yeah, so without further ado, we're going to get on it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to edge uh, the bowed part. Might as well show you the finished side. The bowed part of this, I'm going to uh, edge, dye, and um, burnish that area right there um, before I start gluing this thing together because once it's glued onto the next piece, you can't edge and burnish it. So that's what we're going to do first. So give me just a minute. I'm going to get my tools together, and uh, we'll get on it. All right, so first things first, I'm going to edge and dye that piece. Let me bring my camera down so you can see my work surface here. All right. So this is a Barry King number zero edger. I just want to barely take the corner off. I'm not trying to like perfectly round the whole thing or anything. And again, I'm just edging this one part here. I'm not bothering with the rest of it yet. That'll be done once I've got the entire project ready to... Uh, edge and die and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Now, I've got me a dauber, and I've shown this on a lot of videos, but I will continue to show it because everyone needs to know this little trick. This little dauber has lots of fuzzies and stuff like that, and I'm going to try to use it to precisely put die on that edge. Okay, so with all those little fuzzies, that's not going to happen. So I have this handy dandy little lighter here. This video is not sponsored by the Bic Corporation, but they do make the best lighters. <laughs> Disposables. All right, so I did there, just burned it all down. It's like a little charred up, looks like a marshmallow now, right? So I take it over my trash can. You won't be able to see this on the video, but I just knock that char right off, just like that. I guess you can see it on the video. Okay, then after that, I pick up the cutting board I just knocked over. There, all right. Now, got me a little bottle of dark brown leather dye. Um, I mean, any brown will do, really, um, but I just happen to have dark brown sitting here. Okay, now, as long as my hands are nice and steady today, we'll see. I'm just going to run that right along that edge. A lot of people use our uh, refillable markers for this. I, uh, I do like them. They're a great product and everything, but I've just always used just a dauber. So I continue to just use my dauber. Now, I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to use that same dauber and die at the end of my project to do the rest of the edges. But I'm going to set it way over there so I don't mess it up and accidentally uh, knock into it. Now, got another one of these that I'm going to apply me some edge finish stuff with. Okay. This is a really big dauber, so I'm going to burn the heck out of it here. 
I need it smaller. Now, since I burned it so long, I really need to make sure it's not still hot when I go to knock the charring off. Nothing like some melted wool on your fingers. That would uh, not be fun. Okay, now, got me a little bottle of stuff here, okay? Now this bottle of stuff, let's talk about this right quick. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this, but now I think I'm just gonna put the information out there. It's an old industry trick. In this bottle is approximately one third Elmer's glue and two thirds to three fourths, somewhere around there, water. That's it, Elmer's glue and water. It is an amazing edge burnishing compound, folks. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. Um, I've never publicly put that information out on a video. <laughs> um, I do like it, I like it a lot, and it will burnish things that other burnishing compounds won't burnish, okay? So between that and the canvas I'm using here, I'm gonna get a real nice slick edge on this. Um, I call that little concoction white lightning. Um, you've probably heard me talk about it in other videos, but again, I've never actually said what it was. So there you go, folks, my secret is out. Again, it's not just my secret. Lots of people know about that stuff. A lot of the old hand folks, the, the kind that won't share secrets with you, they know about it. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's, it's honestly one of my favorite burnishing agents, uh, it and token oil. And if you smell token oil, it smells kind of like that. So I wonder how much Elmer's glue is in token oil. All right. So there it is, folks. That's my white lightning secret. I'm put my little bottle back away over here because I'm going to use it again later too. Okay, now we got some gluing to do. I need to glue this piece to this uh, scrap I've got here. And I'm gonna do those back to back. And then I'm gonna glue this piece onto that piece, just like that. All right, so what do I need to do? I need to kind of mark where all my glue is gonna go. And that way I don't accidentally put glue where I don't want it, okay? So I'm going to grab me a pen. Hopefully I have one of those. Actually, I got one right here in my pocket. And I'm just gonna trace the uh, outline of this thing onto this backing here. Man, my pen's not working too good. At least not on this. Um, I'm gonna trace this off. I got a marker here, I'll use it. Hopefully it works. Yep. And it just uh, helps me to figure out where to put glue, where not to put glue, um, so I don't just slather glue all kinds of places that doesn't need to be. Okay, so just loosely trace my outline there. And then the same here, I'm gonna put this piece on top of here, and I'm actually, I'm gonna move it down about a 16th of an inch, just a tiny bit, so that I can grab me a, a, a scratch all and just barely leave me an imprint of where I should stop my glue. And again, I moved it down about a 16th of an inch so that this line will in no way be visible on the finished piece. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna glue the back side of this leather to the back side of that leather. And this, um, the back of this leather is actually finished already, so glue's gonna spread on it pretty easily, but it'll still adhere just fine. Now still I'm undecided if I'm gonna hand sew this or machine sew it. Um, I want to hand sew it, but time doesn't always allow for that. Uh, but I also really like proving to people on videos that 
you can hand sew my projects easily. It just takes more time. I, I don't ever want to make a video where people are like, oh, I can't do that. I don't have a sewing machine. Anything you do with a sewing machine, you can do by hand. It just takes longer. Alright, so once I get this all spread out here, I'm going to actually uh, let it set for a few minutes. And um, that way the glue's set up and ready to, uh, to, to stick together. Because contact cement, you do have to wait until it's, it's ready to set. And then when I come back, we'll stick those two pieces together. And I'll have decided if I have enough time to uh, hand sew or machine sew this. If I'm going to machine sew it, then I'm actually going to do a little bit of sewing right now. And then I'll come back and stick the other piece on and, and uh, the tooled piece on and then um, sew the rest. So anyway, we'll wait a few minutes and we'll be right back. All right, so this is ready to stick. So let's go ahead and stick her on, okay? I'm just going to take and carefully place my top piece within my uh, border that I drew on my bottom piece there. Make sure all the sides press down well, just like that. Okay, now, what I talked about with sewing on a machine versus hand sewing, where the difference lies. For me to sew this on a machine, I'm gonna want to start, we drew that line for the glue right there, I'm gonna wanna start beneath that line somewhere. And I wanna sew up and around these three sides right here and then end on this side. I don't need to back stitch or anything like that, but that way the end of my stitch goes up underneath the tooled piece. Then when I go to sew the tooled piece on, I can just start anywhere and go all the way around the tooled piece and there you go. And then everything is nice and stitched, but at no point did I like walk my sewing machine off the tooled piece and onto the, the main body leather there, okay? So, um, I don't have enough time to hand sew this before I have to go and get my little boy from school today. So, I am going to sew this on a machine. Um, so, give me a minute to set my machine up, and when I come back, we'll be at the machine, and we're going to sew that part, and then we're just going to stay at the machine. We'll go ahead and um, glue the other part onto it at the machine, and then uh, uh, sew it on as well. And then we'll cut it all out and do our edges and be done. This is a very quick and easy project after the tooling is done. <laughs> so there you go. We'll be back. All right. So here we are with this under our sewing machine. Um, just to keep it from hitting my little tripod, I'm going to just kind of pre-trim this little piece down a little bit smaller. So when I spin it around under the machine, it won't uh, hit my tripod. <laughs> all right. So, once again, I've got my, my area, my line that I drew. I know it can't be seen on the camera, or I assume it can't. Um, but no matter, just keep in mind that you're wanting to stay, you're wanting to start your stitches off below that line, like underneath where that tooled section will be. Okay, I'm using a, this is a Cobra Class 18 machine, size 20 needle, 138 thread. Uh, if you're hand stitching, I suggest maybe seven stitches per inch or so with a 0.8 millimeter thread would be very uh, a very nice size to use, okay? Um, I'm not going to back stitch or anything when I start because this is going to be another underneath another piece later. I'm just going to sew around the uh, perimeter of this thing, and that's that. I'm not using my edge guide. We'll see if I regret that later or not. And then when it comes to lining things, I like to sew it with the liner oversized and then trim the liner to fit afterward. Uh, to me, it presents a, a better edge after you sand it and get it all done. I am using a natural colored thread um, because I like the contrast on this really dark brown. I think it'll look really nice. Okay, as I go around my corner, I make sure I make all my turning motions while the uh, needle is down in the leather and that'll keep my, con my stitch length consistent. I 
usually just use my finger as an edge guide and just kind of run it along the side there, making sure that I don't allow it to slip under where the needle is. Because that would be terrible. Okay. Here we come up to another corner, so we're just going to slowly rotate it as we go through that corner. And then, boom, we're back down the side again. And then once again, I'm going to go down an eighth of an inch or so below that line. And that'll be that. That piece is going to be sewn on and good to go. There we go. Okay. Complete that last stitch there and pull my project out. Beautiful line. Good stuff. Okay, I'll trim my uh, my threads here. I need to grab my glue so that I can put glue on the uh, the next part to sew. Okay. Now I'm just going to carefully keep my glue within that line and below it. All right, so I'm going to pull it where I can see it in the light here. You can rough up this leather a little bit if that helps your uh, your glue to adhere. I do want to make sure that my my contact cement goes all the way out to the edges. Um, and I've, I need to caveat that when I say glue, I, I am using contact cement. Um, a lot of people ask. Oh, well, what kind of glue? Well, it's, it's contact cement. That's why I put it on both pieces of leather that I'm going to glue together. And I wait a few minutes for it to set up and then I stick them together. Okay. All the way out to the edges on that. Now I've got my, uh, my tooled piece here and I'm going to hold it up in my hand because I don't want to uh, accidentally get glue. Sorry, I think I just did most of that off camera. I apologize. Maybe it got on it. Anyway, I'm going to hold it up because I don't want to get any glue on my uh, sewing table. Sewing machine table, you know, that thing. Nothing worse than a project sticking to your sewing machine table while you're trying to let it slide along and get good even stitches. Okay, and just like how I didn't get glue all the way to that... Um, drawn line on there. I'm not bothering putting it all the way up to that edge there. I don't want it to accidentally seep where it'll ha need to have a finished edge. Um, the other parts of this will all be sanded and everything so it's okay if it seeps out on the other edges but that edge that I've already finished I need to uh, take care of. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down until I get to the edge. It's a lot easier. Okay. There we go. All right, once again, I'm gonna pause the camera. I'm gonna wait a few minutes for this to set up and then I'm gonna glue those pieces together. So I'll be back. All right, so I've waited a little while. Now I'm gonna glue these two pieces together. But I wanna caution you, if you tooled this piece, it might've stretched a little. It might be a little bit wider than your base piece now. So when I set it down, I'm gonna be very careful. And I wanna set it down where I know that the bottom edges line up just fine. But I want to kind of push the side edges in to where I know that they're going to line up also before I uh, press anything hard together to make sure that, uh, you know, when I sew along this very, very narrow edge here that it's going through everything. Because if the top piece is overlapping, overlapping the bottom piece and those don't line up, then I'm just going to be sewing right off the edge of my bottom piece, and that's not cool. Okay, or not bottom, but the main body piece. How's that? All right, now, to sew this thing. I can start anywhere, so I'm gonna start right here on this side, okay? And uh, this is a pretty thick uh, piece of leather once the all these layers are together here. So I'm gonna adjust my stitch length just a little bit on my sewing machine just to make sure that it is kind of consistent with the uh, other stitches I did. 
Um, if hand sewing, that's not necessary, of course, but sewing machines, the thicker the leather you put under it, then the smaller your stitches become on the same setting. So you have to uh, take that into account and make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I'm just gonna stitch it. I'm in the corner, so as I go around the corner, I wanna make sure and uh, do all my turning movements with the uh, needle down. Now we're stitching across the bottom. And I want to maintain the same distance from the edge that I did on the, the main body piece that I sewed a while ago. That way the stitch lines all kind of line up and look right together. And again, hand sewing this thing is not a problem. I just literally don't have the time to do it today. Uh, I did have intentions of doing it, but that's how the days go around here sometimes. And I got to finish this video today because I'm going to do the other style tomorrow. I'm just going nice and slow, taking my time. There's no reason to rush. I could zip this sucker through here pretty quick and make all kinds of mistakes, I'm sure, but we don't want to make any mistakes. Okay, back into a corner, so I'm gonna make all my turning motions while the needle's down again. Very important to keep my stitch line consistent while I do that. I do love servo motors and speed reducers. That's what allows you to so, so slow. All right, now I'm gonna go around the, uh, this bowed part right here. So I just have to be careful to keep my stitch consistent with the edge of the leather as I go around it. so far so I sure hate to jinx it now. <laughs> I'm bumping into the base of the sewing machine over here on the far side so I just have to make sure and guide that around through there so that I don't uh, it's that overcut liner that's hitting it I don't want it to knock my, my uh, stitch line out of place as I go along so I'm just using my other hand uh, to uh, guide it around there we go almost back to where we started Turn it this way now and sew back down to my original stitch position. I want to make sure that my needle goes back into that same first hole so that when I do my overstitch, it'll line back up into the holes that it started. There we go. All right, so that sucker is now sewn together. Um, when we come back, we're gonna be back over there at the desk. We'll trim all this off and uh, do our edges. All right, so here's what we got going on. Um, I'm gonna take my little snap blade knife here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and snap a blade off of it so I have a nice fresh blade to work with if I can find my pliers that I use to do that. I don't see them. so. Guess we'll just use whatever blade's already on here. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna very carefully right along that edge, just following the edge of the uh, main body piece there. And 
And when I get down to the corner, I'm not going to worry about the corner, the radius of the corner just yet. I'm just going to cut it straight down. I'll worry about those in just a minute once I got all the scrap out of the way. Okay, now I'm just going to cut away those uh, extra pieces there so I can get down to just the corners. There you go. Alright, now I'm just going to, on my corners, I'm just going to make small cuts going around because I'm also going to sand these and that'll kind of smooth them off too. But I found that that's the best way to radius a corner instead of trying to cut round and then your blade starts wiggling back and forth on you and stuff like that. Just small cuts. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to just kind of inspect my edges and everything, make sure everything's nice and flush. And then I'm going to give it a real light sanding on my, my sanding wheel. You can just use hand sandpaper, uh, but I don't see a piece laying on my desk anywhere. So I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, use my uh, Cobra burnisher that has a sanding disc on it. And um, then we'll come back and do our final edges and call this a complete project. All right. So this is the Cobra Burnisher. Um, I'm using just the sanding side of it today. I turn my speed all the way down and I make sure that the wheel is going down in the front because uh, this thing is reversible. I can turn it around and spin it the other way. But anyway, and I'm just gonna barely sand these edges. I'm not doing a lot to it at all. It's just kind of evening them up a little bit so that it'll have a prettier finished edge once I uh, burnish it. There it is. That's all I'm going to do to it. Now I'll go back with my edger. Then I'm going to dye the edges, then I'm going to burnish the edges, just like we did before on the, on the smaller piece. Um, so we'll be right back. All right, so here we go. Um, this is a Berry King number one edger. It's just a little bit larger than that zero I was using before. And I'm just going to go around all of my exposed edges here, front and back. Corners are always a little bit harder to go around, but that's all right. Okay, and same thing on the tooled piece, just the edges we didn't already do. You can use a larger edger if you want. I've gotten to where I use kind of a small edger for a project. I really am not trying to perfectly round anything. I'm just trying to knock the corners off. I used to think that it needed to be just like the edge of a belt needed to be perfectly rounded and all that. And what I've learned is I've caused myself a lot of heartache trying to um, accurately dye and, and burnish those edges as well. Um, it's just a lot easier and it looks just as nice to just knock these corners off like this.
There we go. Um, I will take my lighter. I got some fuzzies where those uh, so so lines overlapped. Just take my lighter and take care of those right quick. Um, now, once again, I'm going to grab my dauber that I used to dye all my edges earlier. And we're going to do it just like we did before. Just carefully run that edge or dye dauber right along the edge, making sure, especially since I used a contrasting stitch color, not to accidentally dye my stitch. That would look terrible. Where it's really wide, I just run the dauber super slow and it gets the whole edge good and saturated. Okay, and then I'm just going to check the back side, make sure I got it, got the die up against the back edge as well. There's a little spot I could do some more on. There we go. Ready to burnish. Close that die bottle. I'm done with that, uh, that dauber, so I'll throw it out so I don't accidentally mess something up with it later. Okay, and then just like before, I'm going to use my white lightning here. And I'm just going to do a side at a time because there's no use in putting this all the way around and then only being able to burnish a side at a time. It'll set up and you won't be able to uh, do as well with it if you uh, try to put it on too many edges at once. Okay, I'm going to get off the desk a little bit so I can get a good rub on it. And sometimes... I'll take and burnish it, then I'll take a piece of sandpaper and re-sand it, and then I'll burnish it again, and that second time it's going to look like glass. So again, uh, anywhere from one-third to uh, one-fourth water, and, or correction, um, Elmer's glue, and then you know two-thirds to three-fourths of water. And uh, it helps if you use warm water because it won't want to mix too well together the first time. Um, but yeah, make up you a little bit of a white lightning there and see what you think of it. works best with a piece of canvas. I don't get as good of results with the white lightning with a uh, wooden burnisher, but it works really good with a piece of canvas. So that's it folks. Uh, that's that project. It's, uh, it's again, if the tooling part's the long part and you don't have to tool it, you can just use different colors of leather or something like that and uh, make the exact same project. It turns out really nice. Makes a quick and easy uh, gift or you know something to sell or whatever you want to do with it. So I've got one more side to burnish here, but I don't feel like making you watch me do it. Um, yeah, and if it doesn't lay completely flat, I'll set this thing out overnight with some books on top of it or something to get it nice and flat and uh, it'll be just fine. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, if you did and you don't already subscribe to our channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply, and I hope you have a great day.